Well, welcome to the press conference. The rain has stopped, so we're going to get started. It's my pleasure to introduce to you the Secretary of the West Virginia Department of Transportation, as well as the Commissioner of the West Virginia Division of Highways, Mr. Jimmy Riston. I don't think that's any coincidence. As soon as the big guy got out of the truck, the rain stopped. So. <laughs> About that. This is a, uh, a very banner, it's a banner day, it's a big day, uh, it's a unique day. Today is a Tuesday, the second month, the 22nd day of the 22nd year of the century. This will only happen again in 400 years. So, so this, this is a very special day. Uh, I can guarantee you that 400 years from now we will not be sitting here working on quarter age. So, uh, this, uh, without further ado, what I'd like to do is to introduce the guy whose vision has made this possible. We have a lot of, a lot of people here that have worked long and hard. Uh, this, this is the guy that leads us to get it done. So, uh, our 36th governor of the great state of West Virginia, Jim Justice. Oh, now we're going to need to stand up. That's it. Well, listen, there's lots and lots of folks here that deserve lots of credit. You know, uh, you've got our great senator here, Central Mansion, I'm sure deserves a bunch of credit as well. Absolutely, you've got a great congressman here, and, uh, and, and David and Shelly are great, great, great friends. And then Brother Jimmy and lots and lots and lots of others. Now, let me just say just this. And I and I am pretty uh, I'm pretty dogmatic about being a coach from time to time, you know. And when I set my my sights on doing something, my I, I am eat up with passion. Without any question, I said over and over and over. The most important project, period, is quarter age. That's all there is to it. Now, you know, I would love to see us finish the Coalfield Expressways and the King Cole Highway in southern West Virginia and lots of other projects, but without any question, this is number one. And it has to be. Now, and we've made real progress, real progress. I was just talking to Jimmy. I was just, uh, you know, I think we've, Got 123 miles of quarter inch either in work or, 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 or moving forward on it. And, and there's like a, a delta of 23 miles that we still got to go. Is that right? So we're making real progress. We all want it to be faster, don't we? And absolutely, I'm going to keep pumping all the money that I can pump into moving and moving the projects faster and faster. Just because... That's not baby dog, is it? <laughs> baby dog doesn't bark unless you unless you've got like a chicken nugget and you have and you have not given her enough chicken nuggets, you know. It's amazing, you know. Let me let me stay on baby dog just one second. As long as you're eating, baby dog wants to eat. But as soon as you quit eating, she's fine to go to sleep. You know, but but nevertheless, uh, this project is unbelievable, and now we're ready to get it built. I mean, a bridge, if you can just imagine, is going from over there all the way to over here, 3,300 feet. I think it's 146 feet high, you know, and it goes right over top of our heads right here. And that connector, is bringing together all kinds of places, whether it be, you know, Parsons or Kearns or Davis or whatever it may be. You know, it's good stuff. And not only that, we're going to be employing a whole bunch of people up here, and they're going to be spending money here and doing all kinds of good stuff, and that's great stuff too. So I could go on and on and on, but I super thank these great people that are here and all that they're doing, and that man right there, because he's a superstar, and many, many, many others, especially all y'all that are walking around. I've got papers blowing everywhere, don't I? 
I don't ever need anything to talk from. Because <laughs> if I'm going to sit here and drift off into baby dog and everything else, what do I need any notes for? But at the end of the day, seriously, you know, I love it. I love it from the standpoint that we've gotten a lot of stuff done and we're continuing on to do more and more and more. Our state's cooking and lots of people deserve a lot of licks and a lot of credit and everything for it. And I'm really proud of them. So I thank all of you so much in every way. Thank you for having me. Well, at this time, I'd like to introduce another one, a person who is uh, very instrumental in uh, helping in a lot of ways, not, not just on quarter age, but in, in our transportation system all across the state. Uh, that is our, our Senator Capito. Please come up. behind here. I have my notes too, Governor, and uh, I'm, I'm sort of like you, but thank you, Jimmy. Uh, I, I would like to just take a point of personal privilege and thank Jimmy for uh, all the help that he and all of you work uh, at the West Virginia Department of Transportation have done for us at the federal level. Many of you know that I was very instrumental or at the beginning on the, oh, I hear that dog. Is that, that's poor. It's not baby dog. That's not baby dog. She's not guilty. <clears throat> and if it's my dog, it's coming from up above. So, um, uh, the, the way that w as we were creating the new infrastructure package and trying to make sure we're meeting the state's needs, they were absolutely instrumental in helping us to try to formulate how the governor can best spend the money, give the governor the flexibility that he needs, uh, give the governor the ability to move through some of the regulatory and the permitting processes a little bit uh, quicker through the one federal decision. Uh, Jimmy says, yeah, we'll see. Well, we're, 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 it's in there and we're working on it. It's not in there for this project, but it's in there for the projects to go forward to, because time is money. And if we're going to finish this and it's not going to be 400 years later that we gather together, uh, I want to see that. I want to see this and I'm not, I don't know that I'll make it to a hundred. So I don't want to wait that long, Jimmy. So I want to see the completion of this. And with governor justice as our governor, I know that's going to happen. Uh, when I first started Mimi, you'll remember uh, certainly um, the folks from from Al Randa. I didn't have to. I've never had Tucker Clark County until I got to be your senator. But we're right here next to one another. West Virginia is one big community. But this was always uh, always the key to this part of West Virginia, and it remains the key. And Robbie, with your leadership at the Quarter H Coalition and a, a lot of the push that you've done, pushing me and pushing David and others to move through to make sure that we can find those pockets of money. Because as we know, and uh, John Leslie is here, he's the contractor here on this magnificent uh, bridge. When we started uh, getting down to how much that's going to be, and, and or John Farley, I'm sorry, I, I got my, my, my John's mixed up. John Farley back there. Sorry about that, John. Um, these are expensive projects. It's a lot of money to move through this last part. And it's a lot of match money from the from the uh, the governor and from the state. So we want to make sure we get it done and we have the money. So I'm just going to go through a little bit of the money that we have had that David has worked. David voted for the infrastructure package. In that infrastructure package, we have a two billion dollar set aside for rural service transportation. This is a pro pro project that I created so that we our highway dollars and our special grant dollars are not getting eaten up by these huge urban projects that take billions and billions of dollars and leaving rural America still left behind. Within that is a $500 million set aside for new rural programs for, for Appalachian uh, highway systems at 100%. That means no match. So I'm always I was trying to think of ways that we can push this as quickly as we can. There is more money too also at the ARC and I, I think uh, Senator Manchin might have an in there with uh, our ARC co-chair being Gail Manchin. So I think we got a good ear right there to push the rest of those dollars. Uh, we also have $195 million in that new infrastructure package for this. But when the cost of this bridge is, what did you tell, what did you say? 146, 146. yeah, that, that goes quickly. Uh, so I'm absolutely um, thrilled to have David on the House side. He has been instrumental in energy and commerce in a lot of ways for West Virginia. He's been so impactful for this part of the state. He's a leader in terms of um, 
knowing the best way to deliver infrastructure packages, to put them together, and to fight for them. And oh, I think he's an engineer, but I'm not really sure. I don't know, David. Are you? <laughs> he, he's definitely an engineer. And so um, he laughs at me because I'm not an engineer. But uh, in any event, it, w it wouldn't be possible without him. Uh, so I, I appreciate everything. And, uh, and the leaders here, the local leadership, you guys have been terrific. And, uh, and I, I just want to take one minute to say one other thing on a totally different topic, because I was talking to the folks out there. What's on everybody's mind right now is what's going to happen with the Ukrainian situation, the Russia situation. Uh, my understanding is the president's getting ready to speak if he's not speaking right now. We've tried to put sanctions and tried to get the president to preemptively put very difficult sanctions on Russia to prevent on the front end uh, Putin doing what he's absolutely doing right now. He has troops in two different sections of Ukraine right now. He wants to coalition build and bring the USSR back to that failed state that it was and regain the properties. Ukraine is a very valuable, it's the breadbasket of, of that region. It's a very valuable, vibrant economic um, country that wants to join with Western Europe as part of NATO. And why is this important to us? It's important to us because we have to remain the superpower in this world. If we cede that to Putin or to China, then things like this are, are not going to have the flexibility and the freedom to move forward. The governor's not going to have the freedom that he needs to make West Virginia as great as he's working uh, to do. So it is important. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Sanctions, weapons, help to Ukraine, all the coalition building with, with Europe and our other allies is where we're going to be. I do not believe in, that we should or will put any men and, many American men and women on the ground in this country to defend their, their country. They're going to have to defend their country with our help, but we need to be strong in helping them, and that's the commitment of a lot of energy, money, and uh, forceful diplomacy, uh, along with strong sanctions and the rest of the world saying, I couldn't believe Germany this morning. I woke up, and they actually... Uh, ceased the uh, Nord Stream uh, pipeline, which I thought was a very big, bold move on their part, seeing how that's what's going to supply natural gas into their country from Russia. But if you don't speak, if we don't speak loud and use every tool in our de in our uh, in our quiver, we're not going to stop somebody who's a, a maniacal power builder as as uh, Vladimir Putin is. So I just wanted to get that on the record, and please uh, pray for our. Uh, soldiers who are over there now to, to give the expertise that they have and also for our president for the wisdom to make the right decisions. So thanks for letting me kind of go off topic there. And thanks for letting me be here today for the Cheat River Bridge. This is great news. Thank you, Senator. Uh, next up is, uh, is a man that uh, cast a vote that took a lot of courage. Took a lot of courage, Congressman. Uh, Kind of went uh, went went the other way from a lot of folks, but we thank you for that vote. That 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 got it got it across the finish line. It uh, helps us to follow the big bold vision that our governor started, and we're going to get this done. Uh, the senator mentioned that he is indeed an engineer, which uh, which which kind of plays to to me. I can actually talk to him and understand what he has to say, and we we we, we speak the same language, Congressman. So, uh, Congressman Kenley, please come up. Yeah, we can talk that same language. There aren't too many of us. In, in Congress, there are only two of us who are licensed engineers. Out of 435, two. Now, there are 242 attorneys. <laughs> so we, we like the odds on that when we talk about infrastructure and how important that is for us. But let me go back just uh, uh, to just thank you all. Uh, and thank particularly for the governor uh, and Shelley. Uh, Shelley, for crafting the legislation uh, uh, taking credit, working over there to, to get giving us a bipartisan piece of legislation that was needed in West Virginia. And then working with the governor on, on pushing this thing forward. But let's, let me go back. If you go back just a, to four, five, six years ago and working with Governor Justice, he said then Quarter H was the most important highway project he wanted to do in West Virginia. He's been saying this, and he, he was humbly making those comments, but I can tell you from firsthand how important that is. Because here, what, what has bothered me about quarter age 
It's 50 years. We started this, an interchange at Weston in 1972 under Arch Moore, Shelley's father. 50 years later, we still haven't finished it. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, because I don't have to yell at him because he's got it, he understands <laughs> it. He, he definitely gets it. But over the years, if this quarter H had been connected to Charleston or to Wheeling or Parkersburg and Morgan, it would have been finished by now. But because it's in this rural section of West Virginia, it just kind of get pushed aside, Mayor. People just ignored this until he came back on board. Now with the governor, we're going to push this thing forward and finish this. It's time. Your patience, I can't understand how, after 50 years, why it's taken so long <coughs> with this. Uh, now, when it came to, as Jimmy Car made reference to the infrastructure bill, uh, there was no it wasn't a hard vote at all. This is what we needed in West Virginia. Get this infrastructure. Having been in construction all my life, back to, I was telling Jimmy earlier, I, my first job was with the State Road Commission back in 65 and 66. In fact, we called the State Road Commission back then. And we made, so we've known about the condition of our roads. So I knew about the failures that were occurring all over before the public became aware of it, before the U.S. News and World Report ranked us last in the nation, before the American Society of Civil Engineers published their report card about our conditions of infrastructure in West Virginia, where they rank us last, D's and F's. So just think about that. If your son or daughter came to back home from, a, from school with a report card they had D's and F's on it, what would you do? You'd do something about it. And Jim Justice has done something about it. He's made this commitment to be able to do that. And what we had to do in Washington, we had to do the same thing. We had to vote for it. Now, there are people saying, oh, we should wait. We should wait. Folks, we've waited 50 years for this. This is not a time to be waiting. This is going to give us the infrastructure we need. It's going to give us access. It's going to give us jobs. All these are positive things. Don't wait. And don't tell me that these are wasteful spending that's in this legislation. Because I've got to tell you, is this quarter H, is this bridge wasteful spending? No. How about the water lines down in, in central West Virginia, Clarkville, wherever they may be? Are they wasteful spending? Is broadband coverage, is that wasteful spending? Think about that. This is a chance for us to emerge. We don't have all those excess revenues to be able to do it. But with this infrastructure bill and combined with the leadership of Jimmy and, and, and Jim Justice, we're going to move forward. I'm really excited about this possibility with this thing. So with that, I thank all of you. Thank you for your patience. But for me, my patience has run thin. It's time to start construction. And that's something that I love construction. It's one thing I miss all the time in, in, in being in, in Congress is to be part of seeing something coming out of the ground and knowing that it's going to benefit the state of West Virginia. As a seventh generation West Virginia, it's time for us to emerge on the, on the national scene, and we're going to do it with this infrastructure. God bless all of you. Thank you so much for Quarter H. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, I, Congressman, I can tell you for sure, this governor doesn't wait. <laughs> Governor, the, you're starting to see a pattern here of these taking these decade-old projects and getting them done. So, uh, speaking of uh, working on something for a long, long time, uh, my next, the next person I'd like to introduce, and he's worked tirelessly, tirelessly with a lot, a lot of folks. Uh, he is the Quarter H Authority Executive Director and the Randolph County De De Development Authority Director, Robbie Morris. Thank you everyone for being here today. What a great day it is. Anytime we get to announce new sections of quarter age and new projects, it just make, it makes my week, my month, and my year. Um, Governor, thank you so much. Uh, from the beginning of your administration uh, in talking about infrastructure, you have mentioned quarter age. You have been dedicated to quarter age. You included it in your Roads to Prosperity uh, program. Uh, you know, Senator Capito and Congressman McKinley and Senator Manchin can't bring money from Washington without 
without Secretary Riston and your authority to apply for the grants, make it a priority, tell Federal Highways, this is where we want our money spent. They can't do it without your leadership and your guidance. So greatly appreciate what both of you gentlemen have done. And thank you, Senator Capito and Congressman McKinley for, uh, you know, working with us to figure out ways to fund Quarter H. It is a very expensive project, but it is a very worthwhile project. This section of West Virginia absolutely needs Quarter H. And to the Congressman's point, we have waited long enough for the completion of Quarter H. And, uh, you know, for the first time uh, under the uh, direction of, of Governor Justice, people are starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. There is a plan to, to not just keep working on it, but to finish it. Thank you to all the members of, of District 8 uh, that, that work on, on Quarter H tirelessly. Every time I see them at Kroger's or Walmart or out at a restaurant and you know asking for an update, they just start telling me before I even ask now because they know that's what's going to come up. Um, it's a lot of effort on, on a lot of people's part. Uh, the contractors that have, been, that have been working on this have done a great job. Uh, and we want to keep you in this area and keep working on it until we finish this up. So on behalf of the Quarter H Authority uh, and the citizens of this region, thank you so much to this entire great team at both the state, local, state, and federal level for making Quarter H uh, happen. And let's get it finished up. Thank you so much. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask the governor for uh, some closing remarks. You know, I, I listen to everybody all the time in the briefing. You know, I'll make notes of the experts, you know, as they're going through the whole briefing. And then I'll bring it back up, you know, what they've, what they've said. Listen to, to me on this, you know, because you know I'm the guy that truly always just tries with all in me to tell you the truth. The Coalfield Expressway, we were over there Really, it was in the initial campaign. And, and I said, how long have we been working on this? And they said, 28 years. 28 years. And I said, standing at the podium, I said, I'll build the damn road. Now, and now we've been working on this for 50 years. I mean, just think about that. Now, it's unbelievable, unbelievable how these people right here are all on board. I want to talk just one second just about this. You can't fathom what an incredible senator we've got to sit right here. I mean, that's all there is to it. I mean, she is just the best of the best of the best. You know, Senator Manchin's great, but this senator's the best. And absolutely... And... and, and, and and I love them both. I really do. But, but in addition to that, I, want to just, I just want to just pause just one second and say just this. David McKinley is standing right here and he says to you, he said, it wasn't a hard vote. Don't you believe that? Don't you really believe that in his heart it wasn't a hard vote? But it was a hard vote. And he drew all kinds of errors, did he not? Did he not? And honest to God, he stood for West Virginia. That's what he did. Now, in that, if you believe something else, you're not thinking right. That's just all there is to it. I mean, that is a good man right there. And a man that loves West Virginia and a man that is dedicated to West Virginia. And we got a superstar senator, but you've got a superstar congressman right there, too. And absolutely, the only way we have gotten to where we've gotten along this path is we've all stayed together and pulled a rope together, haven't we? We've honestly put stakes in the sand and said, by God, we are not going to be the state that people think is backwards and poor. Baby dog even flashed Bette Midler. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, like it or not like it, we have put a stake in the sand that says we're the diamond in the rough. We're the diamond in the rough that people missed. And look what's happening right here. Now, I would tell Jimmy this. If there's a way, I don't care how the way is. If there's a way, some way, somehow, 
before I left office that we finish this, that's what I want you to do. Period. If there's a way, somehow, some way to finish the Coalfield Expressway before I leave office, that's what I want you to do. And if we can use these surpluses in the American Rescue Plan or we can use, you know, all the infrastructure plans or whatever it may be to finish and do the things that will really bring goodness and opportunity and jobs and everything to us, that's what we need to do. So absolutely don't take it for granted, please. A congressman's vote, while many, many, many people were bombarding him to go the other way, even a good friend of mine, and his too, and Shelley's too, you know, and President Trump. Good friend. Really close friends. You know, it took real courage to stand for you. Real courage. And that's all there is to it. And that's what makes us real West Virginians. And that's what makes us able to pull this rope together. So I'm sorry I'm running my mouth so much, but uh, it's meaningful, David. And it's meaningful, Shelley. And I mean it. You know, and for anybody here that thinks differently, I'm going to sick baby dog on you. That's all there is to it. All right, that's all I got. Thank you all so much for coming out. Good day. Go home. Go, go do work. <laughs>